HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Phipps Insurance Agency, representing companies such as MapFree Insurance. Their family-owned independent agency is deeply rooted in the communities they serve and offer time-tested insurance products to fit individual needs. Since 1950, Phipps Insurance specializes in home, auto, business, condo, and renter's insurance. Hello, and welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, the Dover Sherborne Hopkinton girls hockey team raised money to help fight ovarian cancer. The latest on Hiller Sports and Matt Clark has our HCAM insider. But first, Library Director Heather Backman gave us an update on happenings at the Hopkinton Public Library. I am standing in front of our Lucky Day collection, um, which does not look like much of a collection right now because it has been so tremendously popular. This is something that we've just launched um, thanks to the Hopkinton Public Library Foundation, which is sponsoring the collection. And what it is, is it is the biggest, most popular books, the things that everybody is waiting for. And we have extra copies. They are not able to be placed on hold and they only circulate for two weeks with no renewals. So if you come in and that book that you've been waiting for on a really long hold list is on the shelf, it is your lucky day. And you can take it out if you can read it fast and get it right back on the shelf for the next person to read. Uh, as you can see, we've started with 25 copies and we have two right now. So people are really enjoying it. We're very thankful to the foundation for funding it. Terrific, and is it all kinds of different books? Right now it is largely adult fiction, so given the success we're hoping that we might be able to expand it to, you know, we would buy nonfiction for adults if, if there was something that was really popular, but hopefully we could even potentially expand it to teen books or children's books if we we're able to um, figure out a way to do that. Terrific, and I understand you have some big news for us. We do. Um, many of our patrons who have been coming here would probably recognize Tony Alexander. She has been at the circulation desk for more than 30 years with us and um, has been here through six directors and taken on more and more, seen the library through a lot of changes. Uh, Tony has announced that she is going to be retiring at the end of February. So after amazing contributions to this library, uh, amazing connections with our patrons. She'll be moving to the next phase of her life and we're certainly going to miss her. Um, we're very glad that she's um, doing something that's great for her with her next step. Uh, we wish her the best, we're sure the community wishes her the best, and we certainly hope that folks come in over the next month or so and say goodbye if they want to say goodbye or tell her a little bit about what her time at the library has meant to them. Um, she's really been a fixture here, and it's going to be a different library without her, but we are um, very, very happy for her in her next step. We always have programs coming up. If you go to our calendar at hopkintonlibrary.org, you can see everything that we've got. Um, just highlighting a few things that we have coming in the next month or so. We have launched a baby toddler story time. So this is a story time for the younger set. And that is running Tuesday mornings and one Monday evening per month. Uh, for the teens, on February 4th, we have a crafternoon. They will be making hanging gumball machines. Um, that is sign up only grade 6 to 12 on the afternoon of February 4th and that same evening Tuesday February 4th we have a talk on the roaring 20s from a historian so we're hoping people be interested in that. We're also asking people to mark their calendars. Friends of the Library are bringing mini golf back again and that will be on February 28th and 29th.
just went up and it's open. Our gallery hours are from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. every day. We hope that you'll come on in and take a look at it. These are uh, three artists who worked collectively on a show that is called Eviction, Destruction, and Renewal. It's really interesting work that they have. Um, their work really complements each other. Um, this show is going to be up for over a month and a half, and then we'll have an artist talk um, and reception on February 21st. So you can come and hear what inspired them and uh, with their work and how uh, they felt like it just sort of naturally, organically worked together. just started our winter session it's not too late to join there's something for everyone we have from little music classes for little ones through to adult classes in the visual arts and ceramic and we have a new acting program for adults um, being taught by our own Jerry Shea who is a professional actor and lives here in town we have um, music classes and uh, theater and music and a string of uh, visual arts classes that are happening at now and we also put up our summer classes but you're not ready to think about summer it's been kind of feeling warm in the last couple of days so uh, for those parents that need to secure summer camps they are available to register online now A brand new uh, program that we're starting is a youth chorus um, going to be led by Monica Spencer who is uh, one of our voice instructors and also a sub music teacher and has been for over 20 years uh, in the Hopkinton and Bellingham school systems and so this is for children in uh, grades 4 through 8 right now who are interested in singing and it's going to be a, a performance um, choral group and that's going to be starting up in the beginning of March. So we hope people will come and check that out. The Dover Sherborne Hopkinton girls co-op hockey team is made up with players from several different schools. And this past Saturday before their home game versus St. Peter Marion, they put on a wonderful fundraiser to help fight ovarian cancer in honor of the mother of senior defender Keelan Boyle, who is currently battling the disease.
I'm not sure that we'll ever see a cure, but as long as we can find early intervention, we're going to make a change in the world. Thank you. After the pregame ceremony, the game got underway. St. Peter Marion struck first. Was there for St. Peter Marion. And now out in front, there's a goal. St. Peter Marion strikes first. On the goal, it's the left winger, Taylor Hackett, Hacker Pratt, the sophomore. At 5.56 left in the first period, Emily Haman made it a 2-0 St. Peter Marion lead. But DS Hopkinton co-op struck back soon after. Now we'll see if Nova Sherborne Hopkinson can get some momentum going. Racing up the ice and racing in. Shot goal! Emily Swinhammer, the freshman out of Tri-County, makes it a 2-1 to game. What a great move there. It was going to be a delayed call, too, that Nova Sherborne Hopkinson was going to go on the power play. But what a great move, end-to-end -end rushing. Beautiful shot. It was a 4-1 to St. Peter Marion lead in the third period until Sophia Mazzucchelli out of Blackstone Valley Tech found the net. There's Kelly Bailey on the last attempt, and there's another shot, just wide, and trying to put it in, and she does. That was Sophia Mazzucchelli with the goal. On the initial shot, it was Abby Wayne, and Ma Mazzucchelli on the rebound was able to put it in. St. Peter Marion took the game 5-2, but a great turnout was on hand to stick it to cancer and raise money to fight against ovarian cancer. Coming up next, the latest on Hiller Boys Hockey and Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. A whole lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of healthcare options. Welcome back to HCAM News. The Hiller hockey team is ranked by many as the number one team in the state right now. In their last two games, they upheld that reputation. This past Saturday, the Hillers welcomed in Medfield, and in the first period, the Hopkinton scoring was fast and furious. Tire, and we are underway at New England Sports Center. Hamlet is going to send it to the side of the net. Did that go in? Yes, it did! Look at that, eight seconds into the game, Tommy Hamlet makes it one nothing. Unbelievable. 14.52 left to go in the first period, and just like that, it's one nothing Hillers. James Wilder and your defenseman, or James Cozzolito, as there's a shot and a goal, how about that? The power of Andrew Gilbert makes it two to nothing. You can't blink when this Hillers group is playing. Unreal. The game. Sean Walsh racing up the ice. Here he comes. Look out. Towards the net. Back at her in. Sean Walsh. Unbelievable. It didn't look like he had a good angle on the puck, but he said, you know what? I'm just going to backhand it right in there. Now he gets the goal he was looking for. He thought he had one earlier, but the officials raised, they waved it off. But now Walsh officially has a goal in this game. And it's 3-0 Hillers, 6.24 left to play in the first period. Racing in, 
And now it's going to get by Schofield, and it's going to be a race to the puck. Here goes Hamlet towards the net, leaves it out in front, and Rogers puts it in. Four nothing, Ellers. For Medfield, Hamlet along the far side now. Gets it to Walsh. Walsh out in front. Rogers shot goal. A beauty of a feed from Sean Walsh, and a beauty of a goal by Kyle Rogers. Kyle Rogers already with two goals in this game. And Sean Walsh already with two points in this game. And the Hillers already with five goals in this game at 342 left to play in the first period. Five goals in the period. And with the score five to one in the second, Kyle Rogers added another. Hamlet up to Rogers. Rogers on a break back and her goal! Hat trick, Kyle Rogers! The Hillers are back up by five, and Kyle Rogers having quite a night. He has a hat trick. The Hillers took the game six to three and grabbed their 12th win of the season. This past Wednesday, the Hillers welcomed in TVL Small leading Dedham. Dedham would score less than three minutes into action, but the Hillers struck back with vengeance. Run, and Walsh turns it away. A nice job by Walsh. Rogers. Coming up the ice, a shot, and he puts it in. It's a 1-1 game, Kyle Rogers. He had the break up the ice. No one in front of him except the goaltender, and he puts it in. The race to the puck is Carraza. Along the near side now. Weinstock was in the midst of the action. There's Carraza with a shot to go. The freshman forward makes it 2-1. Well, Carraza saw the opportunity and snuck it right in. A beauty of a goal there. And that's his first goal of the season. And around the net and up to the air side. Here he comes, look out, fast and furious, Sean Walsh. And he'll fling in a shot, secondary shot, Rogers, and it's in! What a beauty by Rogers off the rebound. It's 3-1 Hillers. The Hillers kept the momentum going into the second period. Pavit Mera with a great feed to Sean Walsh, and the Hillers made it a 4-1 game with 11.53 left in the second. Dedham added a goal a few minutes later, but the Hillers, as usual, struck back. Mera puts it off the back of the net, able to maintain possession, leaves it out in front shot, Quinlan, goal! Will Quinlan! 5-2 heading into the third, the Hillers added some security early on. Mara back to Walsh at the blue line. Now Pavit Mara sends it in front. Backhander, Quinlan and in! Quinlan and Hamlet, I believe Hamlet got the final touch on it. We'll get a confirmation. It was indeed Hamlet with the final touch and the Hillers took down Dedham six to two. The Hillers improved to a perfect 13-0-0 on the season with the win. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello, Hopkinton. Matt Clark here to bring you everything happening this week on HCAM. So sit back and get ready for this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. On Friday, January 31st at 5 p.m., poet Jason Tandon shares his love of Eastern Asian poetry on a new episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. At 6.30 p.m., the Hillers girls basketball team takes on the Norton Lancers, live in HCAM Ed. On Saturday, February 1st at 8 a.m., tune in for some classic cartoon shenanigans on a new episode of Toon Time. On Monday, February 3rd at 7 p.m., the Zoning Advisory Committee meeting will air live in HCAM TV. On Tuesday, February 4th at 6 p.m., the Select Board meeting will air live in HCAM TV. And at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers boys basketball team takes on the Dover Sherbin Raiders, live in HCAM Ed. On Wednesday, February 5th at 7 p.m., Tom Nappy takes a look at the recent MLK Day celebrations on a brand new edition of HCAM News Focus. And at 8 p.m., the Mass Audubon Society hosts a presentation on local birds of prey on a new HCAM TV special. On Thursday, February 6th at 6.45 p.m., the Pre-K Lottery will air, followed by the School Committee meeting at 7 p.m. on HCAM Ed. And at 8.30 p.m., 
Arthur and Amy sit down with tax aid volunteer Gene Warden on a new episode of Frank and Mary in Hopkinton. And also on Edge Camp Ed, the DS Hillers girls ice hockey versus St. Peter's game and the swimming versus Norwood game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to HCAM.tv slash newsletters, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton, by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care, and we'll talk to you again soon. The annual Hopkinton Youth Commission Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Service took place at Hopkinton Middle School. The event featured a number of activities for charitable causes and to give back to the community. Today we have cards, Valentine's cards being made for veterans. We have some bags being made for um, homeless shelters. We have some cancer care bags being made. We are added in this year a mural with the children where they decorate their hand and it will go on a mural that will be donated throughout the town. So we should have one for the library maybe to um, hang around this time of year, the town hall, um, and we hope each year that that will grow and we can add on to that. Yeah, so a lot going on, um, lots of different organizations with a church, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, um, just community members coming in to help. So, yeah, we're doing well this year. Terrific. It looks like there was a great turnout this year. There was a very good turnout this year. And I want to say maybe we can attribute some of that to we don't have snow this year. Because if anyone remembers this last year, we had a major storm the night before. Um, and we were still able to pull out a good turnout. But this year definitely showed that this weather was in our favor. And community is definitely coming out to support the day today. The day was started off by a speech from Hopkinton High School graduate and co-founder of the company Jebit, Tom Coburn. My name is Tom Coburn. I moved to Hopkinton when I was two years old and uh, went to all the schools here, including playing a bunch of basketball in this gym. Uh, so I ended up after that going off to Boston College, uh, where I thought I was going to go to become a doctor. And I guess, quick show of hands, who watches the show Shark Tank? Anyone watch that show? A couple people? Um, so I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this story, but I ended up pitching a business idea with my friends in a Shark Tank style competition that our school did. Um, and long story short, we ended up winning the competition and that was seven years ago and I still run that company today. Uh, the company is called Jebit. We're a digital marketing company. We work with big brands like the NFL and the NBA. Um, and we've raised about $22 million to date. And we've got 50 employees headquartered. Uh, most of the people are in Boston. So that's, uh, that's what I do for my day job with the large majority of my time. But as you also heard, I started a nonprofit, uh, or I, I co founded a nonprofit 
uh, with my 8th grade science teacher, Evren Gundes, who taught me in this building uh, a little bit around the corner from where we are right now. Throughout the day, scouts, members of the HHS National Honor Society, and volunteers participated in a number of activities to give back to the community. We're doing a project on the Australian bushfire. And the Australian bushfire is a big problem because if you look at this, it's a little bad. And if you sign that, you can, it's like, it's like don't give up hope on Australia because of all the bushfires. Cool. And uh, what made you want to do this project? I wanted to do it so I can help the animals. Well, we're just making Valentine's cards for the veterans here. And cool. Just to Perfect. help them out. And yeah. what made you want to come and do this today? Um, well, you know, just wanted to be part of the community. And they really deserve to have some, show some appreciation. Um, this station is based on our Silver Award project, which is about the physical and emotional benefits of a grateful heart. So right here, we have tons of different posters that you can take with um, different quotes, different mentos and stuff, and um, anyone can make a card for whoever they want. We deliver them to teachers. Uh, we have plenty of fun markers and colors for everyone. And yeah, so we're just trying to spread gratitude around Hawkington, so make everyone happier make the world a happier place, really. So Hawkington's the start of that, and especially at the school. And also, um, well, Adelaide Schuster, my friend's little sister, oh my god. <laughs> um, she passed away, but when she was alive, she worked with the respite center for lots of different di things, and we set up a little station down there on um, gratitude still, but it was for especially the respite center. We had lots of pictures, you could make cards, you could write down quotes that reminded you of the respite center because it's a great place there and it's, it's really awesome. So. Yeah, so um, right now we're making coloring books for the kids at Milford Regional. So we're making covers and then we're picking pages and tying them all together into a coloring book uh, to give to the kids who are in the hospital there. Um, I really like just like serving the community and I especially love working with kids and we've been able to do some of that um, helping you know kids color and put their books together uh, which just really brightens up my day especially on a day off. Uh, yeah so I'm a junior um, a lot of us are juniors and seniors at Hopkinton High um, in the NHS program and uh, we're coming here and we're here with Miss Williams uh, to help out today and we've donated some items to the respite center as well so Oh yeah, what's going on here is uh, we're at uh, MLK Day at the middle school.